wish. So the business of you, like like Alan said, is he had a, a pack in the past about you as a business. It's it's about athletes and coaching staff understanding that the role they play uh, in their career is slightly different in some respects to maybe someone like myself in in um, banking where you've got your own brand, you've got your own business. A lot of what you do is impacting others around you. And because career, your career is fairly short, then it, it challenges. So the, uh, my view, and Tim, Tim's echoes this, is the world of sport has the business of you as its mantra. Everything we believe in, everything this business has been set up to do is all about helping athletes and coaching staff understand um, how the person is a brand, a business, a family member, um, you know, they're a one-stop shop of so many things. But most importantly, like a bit like what Charlie said when he was introducing himself, is it's about your own destiny. It's knowing where you want to go or maybe working out where you want to go. Not everybody has an answer yet. Um, and World After Sport is there to support and to coach and to encourage and to really give some guidance and some planning experience from uh, the, all the great people around us to help us work that, that through. So I'm not going to bore you and, and read slides. I tend to uh, work through them and, and, and open the door. So again, please do dive in. But as you can imagine, and something we learned off from Rugby Australia recently with uh, Steve Anderson and some of his team over there is that sport is a stepping stone. It's one element of your journey. It's not the be all and end all. It's not the start and the end necessarily. It's just one part of your life. Um, so it's really important to realize that we have to have an understanding and a pre preparation of tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We didn't know COVID was coming along. Um, and we didn't know that, you know, things are going to get tough for a period of time. And suddenly we've all had to react. So again, having you are the business um, as, as, a, as a thought process, we all are a business. We all have to think about that epicenter of what's important to us. So for me, it's about maximizing time now, taking advantage of some of the time we have on our hands maybe, and thinking about professionalism, professional life, future career, future ideas, running things, trying things. You know, I'm not saying you come up with one idea, you stick with it, you never change again. It's about trying things out. And some of this slide pack I'm hoping will help work out how you can do that. But again, one-to-one -one conversations with myself and with the World After Sport team is about, you know, we can bring people together. We can help you work that through. Um, it's not about having answers today. It's about working out answers in the future and over a longer period of time. So again, we want you to maximize. And we think our belief is that if we can get these things right now, it's going to help players and, uh, and coaching staff in their current career as well. Because if uh, the view is, if you get saturated in one thing, for example, rugby, then maybe you won't perform as well because you're not thinking about the tomorrows and therefore you've got a concern at the back of your mind. There's something lingering there that you really want to focus on. So by having a, a clear idea of where you want to get to both in and out of sport may just improve and influence and, and, and enhance your career on the pitch as much as off it. So you probably recognize, most of you probably recognize this, this chappy here, um, Mr. Back. Um, former obviously England international and World Cup winner. So Backy there half and half. Um, he very kindly let me uh, steal this photo from him. I think I lent him the tie by the looks of it. Um, so I'm going to run through the, some of the thoughts and processes. But again, this is interactive, guys. Please do chip in if you've got any things. In business, we're encouraged to have a plan and a personal development plan. Um, certainly in the corporate world and it's something that I instill in people that I work with even today is if you've got an understanding of what you want to achieve we can work out how to make it happen if I don't know then I can't help um, and if and I can't see whether we're making progress and inroads into that so having an idea of what do you want to achieve as an athlete what do you want to achieve as not an athlete as a, maybe as a family uh, member or obviously as a, as a business person and by business person, I could mean a coach, a coach, a director of rugby, you know, the leader of a, a club. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, it's having that understanding of what tomorrow is in your in your journey. Um, and at the moment, you may be like Martin is 24 years of age and saying, not Martin, um, Charlie, and saying I'm 24 years of age and saying, 
do you know what? I, I, my first aspiration is to become captain. And then my, after that, it's becoming something else. And after that, it's becoming something else. So it's, it's breaking those targets and those ambitions down and making them achievable. Um, and obviously then working with the right people to make that happen. So have, but having a plan, having an idea, and probably noting it down is the most important thing because you can then assess yourself. Financial stability. Um, now, there's talk, and we can help with some of this, is, is you know pensions, investments, etc. We can put you in touch with the right people. Of course, we can. We have contacts with some great guys in, in different uh, organisations here. But also about the day-to-day -day spending. Because again, as an athlete, we assume... We outside the sport assume athletes earn well and they do earn well in the grand scheme of things. But having that understanding and that view that actually things may change and things will change when sport is done is really important and really crucial to thinking actually buying those 300 pound trainers or that, that really posh new phone is, is great. But what about thinking about hmm, the, the, the one below that, that's half the price might be a sensible choice. Um, and it's, it's a really important thing to consider when working through the sporting life and working through sport um, as an athlete and as a coach is just thinking about the, the informal, what we call the day-to-day -day spending is just as important to think about as, as um, the future planning and the, the typical things we think about like ISAs, like, um, like pensions and, and investments as well. This one's a crucial one in, in where World After Sport can help and where we think athletes will really value support going forward is that kit bag of experience and transferable skills. So a lot of what we talk about with athletes and coaches is things that I would talk about in the business and corporate world. Um, and for me, having an understanding that actually meetings, communications, leadership, financial, marketing, talking to businesses, a day-to-day -day activities in corporate world, just as they are in, in an athlete's or a coach's mind as well. So it's really important for and reassuring, I would hope, to athletes and coaches to see that those things are very much in the limelight. We have meetings. We have meetings as players and coaches. We have meetings as corporate people. How we behave at those meetings, how those meetings are constructed might differ. But the essential thing is that we can transfer and develop and enhance on any skills that we've got. And for me, it's really crucial, again, that athletes can feel confident that what they can do today, they can do tomorrow. There may be some jiggery pokery, there may be some tweaks, but they're not significant. And that should give the confidence to, to move forward in life and to move forward in, in the career. Um, just going to let Sean Long in, bear with me. Um, so, Sean, I hope you can hear us. Give you a moment. Hi, Sean. You can't hear me yet. Sean, I'm just going to press on with the pack we've got. Hopefully, you can see my screen. Um, and the last slide from, or the last half of this one, is about uh, ability to adapt. So, I guess as a, as a player or as a coach, you move between clubs um, and you sometimes move between positions. It's having that ability as a brand to, to adapt to the change and adapt to what's going on. Um, and it's really important to be able to do that with, you know, if you are going to behave exactly this way or if you're going to perform in exactly the same way wherever you are, then it's not going to necessarily help you. It's about learning from those experiences. And in my career is in, in banking, I've worked for all of the top four, if not top five banks now. Um, so include, include Metro in there. They all have a difference of how you behave. They all have a difference of how you perform. They all have a difference of how they lead and how they expect you to lead, which means that when I go in as a company and as a business of myself, I need to adapt to their culture. I need to adapt to their expectations, work with them to understand what they are and how they're going to change. And it's very much the same as uh, in sport is you move clubs and you move around. So that that change is going to happen. But some of the things that can happen, of course, is that you can take change into the new club or into the new business. Uh, and you can help influence how things may be. So, you know, I, I know Long has only just joined us, but being someone who's come from league, rugby league and then to rugby union from playing to coaching means that he's got new ideas. 
fresh ideas that perhaps Quinns or other clubs haven't thought about before. So they're powerful ideas that might actually enhance the club, enhance the performance on the pitch and or off it. So that's my side. If I can hand over to Simo to talk through, um, shall we say, Neil Back's prettier side. Well, yeah, I'll go back a little bit as well and say that um, as well as it's all about preparation, this and talking about adapting uh, to change. The most important thing is you, when you go to a new club or a new environment, you've already done your prep and you realise that the core values of that organisation are aligned to what you hold dear, to your core values. So that if you go through all of that as a brand, it's not about sacrificing or selling yourself short. I mean, my personal experience of the transition from uh, rugby to professional life was I, I needed financial you know, um, stability. I, I lost most of my properties in the crash. I didn't get paid in Perpignan. Um, so it meant that I was really up against it. And I just, I just took jobs without having the, the knowledge of the culture or the people that I was working with. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't maximize my brand transition. Um, I'd even go back a step and say, when you're working for a club, um, you know, maybe you know me as a goal kicker or someone with a big boot. Um, and I was, uh, and that was how I got branded. But I was, I hated being stereotyped as just someone that could kick. I, I know. But I, instead of maximising it, instead of saying, okay, that's, that's helped me be understood by the coach, I think I, I was sometimes labelled a bit of a jack of all trades, maybe a, a master of none. Um, and I'd say you might use other analogies, say someone like an Austin Healy who could play in all the way along the back line, um, it, it may be counted against him. So I think you've also got to be aware that your image of yourself as a brand might not be the same as how you're viewed by the coach. And to assume that um, the coach is as obsessed with your, with your performance as you are with your own is, is wrong. So having a, a consistent and clear message in how you work, how you train, how you talk, how you live is, is really crucial to help the people around you, those key people, relate to you and understand your strengths and obviously work with you to, to maybe um, overcome some of the weaknesses. Um, so that's on the other side that links in, you know, what, how and why you think and care and how you speak. It reveals um, the, your core values. And obviously people can see you on a Saturday potentially playing, but also um, when we come off the field, how we perform 24 seven. And I'd say this is also very revealing um, to yourself with COVID, with, with pressure, with depression, we know these are all issues that face everyone and being able to address them and not feel the stigma, um, positive self-talk, uh, understanding how you, how you behave is, is, is crucial to your own self, sense of well-being, your sense of worth, especially when maybe the carpet gets ripped from underneath your feet. Like I said, it happened to me at Perpignan. Um, and all of a sudden I was dealing with lawyers for eight months, just trying to get back to the UK safely. Uh, COVID's no different. This was not in any of our plans. Um, but if you stay true to your values, you understand your, your transferable skills, you can step by step start making a transition back to a better, more successful, sustainable future. Um, so how you think, how you talk. Um, the next slide, it, it's, it's, it's not just about how you do that with your coach or with your teammates or with your other coaches. It's just as important how you talk to your kids. Um, it's just as important how you respond, you know, to those sometimes irritations that you've got to deal with. You've got to be the best version of yourself as often as you can. That is your brand with everybody around you. So it's not just the formal way you deal with fans or the media or social media, but how you deal with everything in your life and everyone and having a consistent message. And, and that is the best way of, in my opinion, of having a mental strength or self-love is that you can respect the guy you look in the mirror, not because you've scored the match-winning try or broken records on the field, but how you've dealt with everybody in your life um, based on your values. And that's, a, that's the true brand. You know, that's the stereotype I think you, we should all be working towards. Um, and the point of the, of the world after sport is that we don't let our sport define who we are 
Uh, we don't let our rugby performance dictate to us how we feel about ourselves. Sport, whether we're coaching or playing, is just part of who we are. And if we're working on all of our core values, being the best version of ourselves 24-7, whatever hurdle comes along, I think you'll have the confidence and the self-confidence to overcome it. If you click on the, 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 the next slide, Martin, thanks. Um, so again, it's, it's about controlling the controllables. We've talked a lot about this. Um, that we, we, if we break down every challenge into a challenge, not a problem. Um, so how do we use today to prepare for tomorrow? We're all confined to, to barracks. We're not able to perform on the field. We don't know what's going to happen in the future, which we'll, we'll come on to a bit more. But how do we make the most of what we've got to, to make it transferable, to start building relationships now from home um, that are going to make you know, our lives easier? So as I've already alluded to, my, my transition from sport came very, very quickly when I signed my biggest contract, invested in loads of property, overexposed myself by not really having a, a life plan and, and a clear vision of where I was going to go to in the future. I was doing the best with what I had. And so I think for me, world after sport is um, getting that circle of trust, getting the people around you so that you can actually prepare consciously for whatever comes along and you've sort of got a, a got a strategy in place um, so that you know if you, if you talk to guys in the coffee shop when you were playing and they were doing a degree or they were doing work experience you know I, I looked up to them and I thought well yeah you've got your head screwed on you've got a plan you've got a mission and they tended to be the guys that were the most organized and also probably the most consistent performers on the field and was that an accident not really. And I suppose the coaches and people that looked at them uh, saw them as, as safe and focused and, uh, and reliable too. So let, let, I'd also say that rather than off the field uh, development interfering with on the field performance, and I know that Hoggy feels very strongly about this too, that, and, and all the evidence down in Australia, um, the more you prepare for life off it now, uh, the better your performance on the field now. And it's statistically easy for me to say, uh, proven. So I think um, let the plan for tomorrow enhance your performance today as well as make tomorrow a lot easier.